I'd like to take just a few moments to talk about the recent decisions of the primates of the Anglican Communion uh, to discipline uh, the Episcopal Church for um, our decision at our general convention last summer to permit our clergy to officiate at gay and lesbian marriages. There has been some confusion about um, what their action actually uh, amounts to. Some people have asked me whether we have been suspended from the Anglican Communion, and the answer is no. But before we talk about what, they, what the discipline actually does amount to, let, let's back up and, and um, talk a little bit about what the Anglican Communion is and this uh, strange term, primates, that, uh, that, that we, we Anglicans uh, use. Uh, the Anglican Communion, as you probably know, is, is the, um, the whole body of Anglicans throughout the world uh, that uh, are essentially descended from the Church of England. The, the, the Episcopal Church is a part of the Anglican Communion, so is the Church of South Africa, many, many uh, churches in Africa, in South Asia, uh, in, in South America, Australia, New Zealand, all over the place. So that's the Anglican Communion. It's the product of British colonialism, but it has evolved into a rich and diverse community of Christians with great um, outreach in terms of disaster relief and um, social advocacy. And uh, we are a very active part of that communion and will continue to be. As for primates, I know it sounds like uh, something you might uh, encounter in the zoo, but basically primate just means first, first among equals. It's, it's sort of the Anglican uh, way of talking about archbishops, the, the chief bishops of a, of a particular uh, member of the of the uh, Anglican Communion. We don't use the term Archbishop in the Episcopal Church, but our primate is the presiding bishop, Michael Curry. So the primates uh, of the Anglican Communion meet regularly at the invitation of the Archbishop of Canterbury, who is the primate of the Church of England. And at their recent meeting, many of them expressed dismay at our decision regarding a gay and lesbian marriage. Now here is the discipline that they imposed on us for a period of three years. First, that no Episcopalian would represent the Anglican Communion in any interfaith or ecumenical dialogue. And secondly, that no Episcopalian would uh, uh, participate in conversations re regarding Anglican Communion policy uh, about worship or doctrine for a period of three years. So we're not suspended. We are able to be uh, apart from those, that discipline, able to fully participate in the life of the Anglican Communion, and we will continue to do so. Some say that that discipline is not enforceable. I don't know. That remains to be seen, but I, what, I, what I really want to, to, to say is that I think it's important that we accept the discipline humbly and with integrity. Humbly because uh, we were not able to uh, arrive at uh, our present position easily or quickly. It was a struggle for us, and it remains a struggle for many of our brothers and sisters in the Anglican Communion. With integrity, because I believe that we've made the right decision. But as Martin Luther King uh, taught us, civil disobedience is always for the sake of the law and for the sake of community, not in opposition to it. And when we take a path that causes others to disagree with us and perhaps to try to discipline us, uh, we, uh, we do it knowing that, we, that, that there will be consequences and that we accept them for the sake of Christian charity and for the sake of truth. So that is my hope, that, that we will move forward as a church with humility and with charity and with integrity. Thank you for your attention.